Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Michael Keneally from Associated CAD Solutions in Cork. So essentially, I'm just going to talk to you about our company, what we do, and run through some of the projects that we've worked on recently, and its relationship to BIM and digital production and digital fabrication and, and so on. So essentially, we're a small business. Um, we were established in 1999. There are two directors. We currently employ 10 staff operating from our office in Cork. Our staff are all architectural and structural engineering people. Um, initially, the business began using uh, 2D software, but as the business has grown, um, we've invested heavily in 3D modeling software over the years. And today, all our business revolves around the use of these 3D software programs. The programs that we're using today would be Tecla Structures um, for all of our steel fabrication detailing. We use Revit Architecture, Structure, and MEP. We also use Navis Works, and also we use a program which Dennis just mentioned briefly there, Tecla BIM site, which is essentially a free-to-use viewing tool, um, which allows us to communicate clearly and effectively with the design team, enabling them to review and as well as check the models that we're producing <coughs> and run a class check through them as well. The projects that we've worked on are right across Ireland and the UK um, within the commercial, industrial, process pharmaceutical, retail and leisure sectors. And the projects that we've worked on would range from you know, providing BIM and steel detailing services for multi-million euro pound uh, projects right with through to uh, smaller bespoke architectural projects as well. Our clients um, range from small fabrication companies right away through to large multinational companies right across Ireland and the UK. So what I want to do is just run through some projects that we've worked on with a particular emphasis on the um, digital outputs from the models which have facilitated off-site production. Um, this project is the Giants Causeway Visitor Centre um, in Antrim, Northern Ireland. The main, our client was Gilbert Ash, who was the main contractor for constructing the, the building. The architect were Hen Hennigan Peng in Dublin and the structural engineer were Arup in the UK. Our scope of work for this was um, just doing the, the BIM model and structural steel detailing. Um, the building itself is a very complex um, shape, um, incorporating varying slopes, <coughs> angles, fold lines, and all of that supports a grass roof finish, which mimics the natural ridge line of the landscape there as well. Um, this project involved a four month pre construction design phase whereby the design team and the main contractor collaborated to tease out the subcontractor detailing issues and incorporate those specific details into the overall um, design of, of the building then as well. Um, our job in this was essentially to create a 3D model of the building um, comprising the reinforced concrete and structural steel frame, the internal walls and finishes and the facade which comprised um, natural basalt stone with um, glazed infill panels between them. The model was created using the design team's 2D drawings. Um, so we created the concrete structure, the facade, and the internal walls, floors, etc., um, using Revit. And then we exported the Revit model um, using the IFC file format into our Tecla uh, software program. And essentially, that model then formed the, the setout and the basis from which we were able to build up the structural steel frame and set it out accordingly um, within the constraints of the, the RC frame itself. Um, part of this was taking the model a bit further, and we also did the structural steel detailing for this project. Um, this is a typical column, which, if any of you have been up there to the Giants Causeway, you'll have seen these type of columns standing within the building. And essentially it runs from the foundation pad right up to the um, reinforced concrete roof slab. This um, column consists of seven plates um, varying in thickness from 20 millimeters to 30 millimeters, which are all um, welded and bolted together 
um, to create this single column sheet as such. Um, so what you're seeing there on the right hand side would just be a typical uh, material list generated from Tecla, um, which allows the fabricator to procure the material ahead of time. Some of these columns were stainless steel and the finish was shot peened. So basically there was a long lead in time into procuring the material and delivering it to site then as well. Um, from the Tecla program, essentially we gave him the 3D model, we gave him the material lists, we gave him the NC files which he was able to upload to his production machinery um, for cutting and drilling. And basically um, the finishes were also applied through the model then as well. Um, using the Tecla model we generated all of the assembly and part drawings, the steel members for fabrication um, and essentially that would have worked right way through. This is just one column, but there were also um, rectangular hollow section, box section columns right way through it again. What you're looking at there essentially is the underside of the roof slab, um, which this is an image taken from Revit. And what that shows basically is the um, intricate pattern formed by the recessed joint lines, um, which were formed by the shutting panels. The roof um, contained all of the trunking and cabling for the lighting, so therefore the lighting fittings and fixtures had to be modelled into the concrete roof slab as well, and the um, shuttering panels were also modelled by us <coughs> in Tecla. Um, this is a reflected ceiling plan generated from Tecla of the roof slab, and because the building itself and the roof contained a lot of varying angles, slopes, rises, dips um, for the former shutting contractor to try and produce um, shutting panel work without the use of a 3D model would have been like, impossible for him to do. Um, this is a typical panel drawing that was produced from Tecla. Um, in all there was 560 um, shuttering panels generated from the model. Each one of these had its own unique number and basically the contractor on site was able to reference this part number back to the reflected ceiling plan and knew exactly where it was to go on site um, when they were putting up the shuttering panels for the, the roof pour. Um, it essentially brings the um, model for Giants Causeway to a close there. The next project we're going to show you is the Eli Lilly IE43 Biotech Manufacturing Facility, which John had mentioned there previously. Um, our client here was Duggan Steel, who are a steel fabrication company based in Mill Street, County Cork. The design team were Jacobs, um, based in Cincinnati in the USA. The total tonnage on the project is approximately 4,000 tonnes, and our involvement here was providing um, a structural steel detailing <coughs> service for our client. The model was created using Tecla. Um, we set this up as a multi-user model, which effectively meant that we had a team of detailers working on the model simultaneously. Um, there were over 50,000 parts in the model, and each one of these parts is controlled directly from the 3D model. Um, the project was divided into four phases, um, approximately 1,000 tonnes for each phase and was delivered to site in approximately 160 loads of steel, so hence the requirement for the traffic lights that John also mentioned earlier. Um, so Tecla's structures essentially contains um, <coughs> a standard <coughs> library of all standard steel stock sizes um, from which we create the model. Um, the model is created from the 2D drawings from the design team and is inputted into the software. Um, the software also contains a set of standard connection macros, and you can see some of the connections there. But you do have the facility to create your own um, customised connections as well. Um, and again, through the model, um, there's the ability to clash check um, the entire model, which is um, obviously very important and critical, given that you've got 50,000 varying components all coming together 
and have got to be erected on site um, again to, to the millimetre. This is a typical um, assembly part drawing generated from Tecla and that contains the information as in the, the length, the size of the beam, the various plates that are welded onto the beam, the weld sizes that are attributed to welding the individual plates onto the beam itself. Um, and every part that you see within the model, um, there's an NC file generated for all of the, the beams and fittings and this was uploaded again to the um, workshop machinery for automated cutting and drilling in a controlled environment within the factory. Um, so essentially um, this job again wouldn't have been possible without the use of 3D modelling. What you're seeing here is essentially a 3D site direction drawing um, for one of the, the loads that was delivered to site. And also you see that there is a, a site bolt location list which is generated from the model as well, which tells you the, the size of bolt that's used, the grade of bolt that's being put in there, and exactly where that bolt is being put in relation to the, the steel members that are being erected on site. Um, so this 4,000 tonne steel project was essentially manufactured off site and all of the information was derived from the 3D model. The next project that I'm going to run through with you is um, a project that we've just recently completed and it's for a Morrison's retail facility. Our client is um, BHC, a fabrication company in Scotland, and the building is being constructed in Cardiff in Wales. The tonnage for this um, project is approximately 700 tonnes, and again we provided structural steel detailing services for this project. In this case, we generated what you're seeing there is basically a screenshot um, from Tecla showing the overall um, model. Um, as I said, it was 700 tons of steel delivered in uh, the site in 28 loads. Um, the, what you see here as well is the first floor and roof steel <coughs> consisted of two <coughs> cambered West Stock cell beams. Um, so essentially what we did with this model was we created a pre-LIM model before we did any of the connections, essentially to facilitate the early procurement of the long lead time items, such as the, the Weststock cell beams that, that you see there. Um, and again, the model facilitated that. We were able to generate material lists and various reports from the model um, so that the fabricator could essentially, given the overall model, negotiate a better price in terms of his procurement of steel and also hit the uh, construction lead in times as well. These are some images of the various types of connections um, that were created using Tecla. Um, again, as I said, there are standard connection macros within the software program, but you have the ability to customize these as well, um, because a lot of the time, you know, some of them may be what have architectural impacts and they need to, you know, aesthetically look a lot more pleasing than your normal run-of-the-mill end plate type connection. What you can see there as well are the pre-cambered um, West Dock uh, steel members with um, shear studs on top of them. The general arrangement drawings are all generated automatically from the software program. Um, and again, this serves two purposes. It serves from a, an approval process. We issue these back out to the design team for approval uh, before the fabricator gets to go ahead uh, to commence fabrication. And also it's used as an aid to uh, facilitate site direction as well. This is a typical steel member from this job. And I suppose what was interesting in this um, <coughs> job was that every single item within the model was given its own unique part number, even though some of them may have been similar parts. Each of them was, um, it was a requirement by the fabricator that each and every part had its own unique part number. Primarily the reason for this is that the fabricator employs a barcoding system <coughs> in his production facility. Um, so each of the drawings, assembly drawings that we generated, 
had a barcode on it there which consisted of the project number and the drawing number as well. And every assembly part going through production had this barcode stamped onto the actual individual part <coughs> as well, which allowed him to track the, um, every item through production. Essentially, the, our client could have multiple projects going through his workshop facility every week. And for him to be able to track and trace where a particular item is within its production life cycle is critical. Um, likewise, if we've got some steel just lying on the floor, they can trace exactly, you know, by scanning it, which project that belongs to the draw and trace the drawing before it and see what phase of the project it's in, which lot of steel it belongs to, and so on and so forth. So again, all of this is derived from the Tecla model. So essentially, um, the model is critical to the production of the steel fabrication and erection of the steelwork on site. And I suppose what we've seen, I suppose more recently, as was in the last 12 months, is there is a greater collaboration, I suppose more so from the UK um, design teams to issue the 3D model in either Revit format or IFC format. So I suppose one of the jobs that we've done recently, we were able to begin by taking the design team's um, Revit model because we use Revit ourselves. Um, likewise, we're going to take in the NIFC model, but we were able to import it into Tecla. And there is a facility within Tecla to convert to Tecla members, which essentially, when you bring in the IFC model initially, what you're given is a, a 3D frame <coughs> structure. It doesn't contain intelligent um, objects that Tecla will recognize at that moment in time. But by using the tool within Tecla to convert these objects, it'll convert it into um, intelligent objects, giving it the correct steel sizes, um, steel member sizes, and locations within the model that Tecla can recognize. Um, so that has had fantastic sort of benefits to both us as uh, an outsource um, modeling provider and to the fabricator as well insofar as it speeds up the um, design process, connection design process, modeling process in turn leads to him being able to fabricate the, um, the steelwork quicker, get through the process faster and also aids the checking of the model as well because we can issue back to design, the design team an IFC model also which allows him run a clash check um, with his architectural model. Um, if they've got an MEP model, they can also input that and, and run a clash check on that as well through the model. So that is essentially um, what we do and some of the, the projects that we've worked on. <coughs> so thank you for your time.